and hello and welcome into Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tysick. My partner, Malik Hill, took a week off back from Chicago. Malik, I don't know what you did on your week off, but anyway, <laughs> it's rivalry week. We as talked about tell. this, but I guess you just forgot. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You went back back home. Well, you're home away from home now. Yes. But yes. Spent a little time in Tennessee. Nice. So we were both out of the weekend. state, which yeah. was fun. Um, so yeah, Michigan versus Michigan State. This is like the biggest weekend for Michigan and Michigan State in a long time. And it's going to be a lot of fun. We're also going to talk about NBA for a little bit. Um, and then we'll do picks at the very end. Um, but obviously the biggest is Michigan and Michigan State being undefeated. Both going to be playing this Saturday. I can't remember the last time that there was a game that was this big. I know, like, Michigan and Michigan State's always big, but, like, this is a nationally big game. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen them both rank this high playing against each other. No, and and like we've said before, like, the last time this even happened was in, like, the 60s or something. Yeah. Uh, so we've obviously never seen it to this proportion, but even just some of the good teams, I, I don't know. The one problem that I have about it, though, is it, maybe it's because of the names or what, but I just don't feel like there's as much firework potential between the two teams. Oh, not at all. Which is, <laughs> it, which is so not weird. It's so weird. They're both in the top 10. They're both undefeated. But yeah, we still, we're still like kind of on edge. Like We don't know what these teams are. This, for weeks, I've been saying neither of them are top 10 teams. Yeah. They just happen to be there because they're undefeated and they're in the Big Ten. Mm-hmm. And nobody expected them to be where they are. Right. And it's it's not to say that they haven't looked good either. They've been good, but we just it, I just feel like we haven't gotten a good test. There's still question marks on for both teams. Yeah. And and even whoever wins this game, especially if like somebody else blows the other team out, then we're gonna have even more question marks. Um and if it's close, we'll still be like, Oh, both these teams are pretty good, but are they that good? I don't know. <laughs> it's just I'm not sure, and I don't even know where to like begin at deciding who I even think can win this game because I've already gone back and forth so many times. You want me to start first, or you, you yeah, still you, you let can go ahead. Swirl around your mind. Okay, so so these two teams, Michigan State lives off of big plays. Sustaining long drives are not a strong suit for them, and scoring in the red zone isn't a strong suit for them either. Good pass rush. Jacob Panachuk, I think that's how you pronounce his name, has more sacks than Aiden Hutchinson right now, and a lot of people don't know that. He's created even more havoc. Mm -hmm. Their defense has gone under the radar, but has performed pretty well all season. Michigan, two high-level running backs. Just a safe placeholder at quarterback, pretty much, in Cade. Mm -hmm. (laughs) A guy who can make the throws but has to put all of his arm strength into it to make those throws and is inconsistent at times. Really good defense. Kind of shaky in the defensive backfield, but you have all-American level guy in Dax Hill, a top-10 pick, most likely in Aiden Hutchinson, Mm -hmm. and a few pretty good linebackers, but they're inconsistent too. Michigan State probably should have lost to Nebraska at home, probably should have lost to Indiana at Indiana. Michigan probably should have lost to Nebraska at Nebraska and almost lost to Rutgers. Mm-hmm. Where do we go here? <laughs> These past few weeks, I've been terrified of this matchup, mm-hmm. seeing the big plays Michigan State makes and how Kenneth Walker has just been breaking like 80-yard runs every game. Yeah. And how the job Mel Tucker has done bringing in all these transfers, playing the most talented guys and putting them all in the best position possible. It's just been an excellent year 1B for Mel Tucker. But I feel like in this matchup where you throw the records out, I'm going to take the team that's slightly more talented. And even though Mel Tucker beat them at the big house (laughs) last year, it was a weird COVID season and Michigan clearly just was all over the place and had no identity and was just lost. Michigan has identity again. 
They showed in the Wisconsin game on the road, if you stop the run, they can make big plays passing it if they have to. They were able to, to sustain drives passing the ball at Nebraska also. They won't be afraid. I think they're ready for this game. They're confident. And they they believe in what they are. A tough running team and a team that can cause havoc on defense and mm-hmm. stop drives. Yeah. And I think just the slight advantage of having two high-level running backs, I think Michigan's O-line is better. They have just a few more pass rushers that cause a, a little bit more havoc. They've been pretty good at stopping the run and pretty good at stopping the pass. I'm going to go Michigan. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go by a score of <laughs> 27-17. Okay. Actually, no, I'm going to I'm going to rethink that one. I'm going to rethink that one. I'm going to go 31-24. Because I think Michigan State breaks off at least two big plays. Because that's what they live off of, and they always figure out a way to get at least a few of them. Yeah. A few Michigan State big plays, plus some field goals, maybe. Gets them to 24. I think Michigan edges them out in the end. It'll be tight for most of the game. I'll be surprised if is there if there's a blowout on either side. Mm-hmm. I think it's more likely Michigan wins by double digits, but I, I still think it's – most likely it'll be a closer game. So as most as everybody knows, I barely trust Michigan at this point, so I'm not picking with my heart. Yeah. <laughs> if I picked with my heart, I'd probably pick them losing like <laughs> like three out of the last like five games. Yeah. But I think Michigan just has a little bit more to outlast Michigan State. Plus Jim Harbaugh has won more at Michigan State in this in this rivalry game than at home. Mm-hmm. So it's something about him coming to Michigan State where he gets the best out of his guys. So I'm going to go Michigan in a close one. Okay. Yeah. But Harbaugh has still struggled in rivalry games. Yes. Um. Man. So my initial thinking was, uh, and I- I'm going to go back and forth, and then I'll make a final decision here at the end. But my initial thoughts were, I I agree with you having. Uh, Blake Horam and Hassan Haskins both being very, very good running backs compared to Kenneth Walker, who I believe is a little bit better than they are, but it is only one of them. He gets, he's getting probably like 30 plus carries in this game, yes. most likely. Whereas Michigan can come at you with both of them and kind of save their legs for this game, yeah. which is definitely going to be, it's it's going to be a test for everybody on both sides. Uh, we know it always is for a rivalry game. But the thing that I started thinking about while you're talking, Mel Tucker is a defensive guy. And if I was to be Mel Tucker, and I'm obviously not because I'm not qualified for that <laughs> position, but if I was Mel Tucker or in his shoes, my initial thinking would be to just try to scare the pants out of Cade McNamara and see what you can do and live by that. Because I don't think that if you try to go in there stopping the run that you're necessarily going to be able to. I think you have to give Michigan all sorts of different looks. Defensively. I agree, yeah. So you have to throw – You got to confuse them at times. You got to mix things up. Right. So you have to throw everything at them. And I would like to think that that's what Mel Tucker will do because it is such an important game. And it's a big game for his his team this year. His their season. I mean, his first full season as a head coach. Like, there's a lot of implications. Obviously, there's. I think there's more pressure on the Michigan team, obviously, uh, because there was like no expectations for Michigan State. But if Mel Tucker can pull off another win against Michigan with zero expectations again, it's red alert time. Yeah, for Jim Harbaugh, if that happens. And they, he he has to win this game. Yes, and then that, I mean, I don't know. Then from there, Michigan State. The momentum swings in the state yeah. for the next, as long as Mel Tucker is at Michigan State, if he wins this game, the momentum swings his way for a few years. Right. And I just think 
like having those big play wide receivers is going to be so nice for Michigan State. And I think it just gives them a more balanced attack. Like we we keep talking about Michigan is somewhat one dimensional. They've they've been able to uh you know, pass it when they need to and kids made the plays. Um he hasn't really made any mistakes. But I just think that Michigan State being able to give you more looks and if they give Michigan different looks on defense, I think they can disrupt that running game that uh, Michigan wants to do. And we've seen teams somewhat be able to stop it so far this season. But, man, it's just really hard because I do think that, like, Michigan's plan to just kind of slow down the game, game manage, can really work against Michigan State, yeah, too, five, because then it five, limits. Six, five, six, seven-minute long drives right. that just suck the momentum out of the stadium. And then it and limits yeah. it limits your opportunities for big plays. So that's kind of where I, I hope that that's how the game works, that it's it's a very tight-played game and that you know we get to see both styles work. But I think just for the sake, I have to go with Michigan State. Not only just to be differential for the podcast but just deep down I just have that feeling again where I think Michigan State can pull this off where at the beginning of the season if you told me that I would have felt crazy but now there is some hope and maybe that hope's gonna all get sucked the life are you picking more with heart than head I feel like it's kind of both okay um I it was more heart at the beginning but I think like I'm convincing my head more with the with the Mel Tucker defensive style. And I think that they can figure out a way, especially Mel Tucker, can figure out a way to get to Michigan and affect Cade and force him to throw and throw in dangerous situations to where I think that I I can see Michigan State pulling this off. Plus they're at home. I know you said that, you know, apparently Michigan's played a little bit better. Um at state, but at the same time, like state won last year. Now they're at home. I just feel like the momentum is on their side, even though there's not a ton of momentum. The only thing that I'm nervous about um, is the week off. Obviously, the week off allows you to get more prep time, but it's also like you're not in that same rhythm as playing week in and week out. You have a week off of like playing hard, uh, which sometimes I feel like can affect things. So I'm going to go with Michigan State. I'm thinking it's going to be like 24 21. Like, I, I so think. So Michigan State still has 24. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the magic number. Yes. And I think because I think the game is going to get slowed down. And because I don't. If like, the game gets slowed down, Michigan State hasn't showed they can play at very well at that yeah. at that pace. And my other thought, too, is that Michigan State might try to open the game trying to match Michigan. And that's that's where I'm like... They got to they gotta come out taking shots. Yeah, and that's they where I'm to. sort of nervous. I'm, I'm a little nervous that it's going to be like... That they'll overdo it. Mel Tucker might overdo it. Yeah, and yeah. it'll be like, oh, you guys are so big into the the running game attack well i'll show you kenneth walker and what he can do which obviously we know he can do stuff but i don't think that's like the best game plan for michigan state necessarily um obviously you want kenneth walker involved and then you set up big plays through the running game but i feel like there's going to be a lot of slowdown maybe at the beginning of the game and then michigan state's going to have to open it up a little bit in the second half um yeah that's what I see. Yeah. I I didn't want to interrupt you when you said it, but you brought up one of the biggest things is going to be them trying to scare Cade McNamara mm-hmm. from the jump and get him unsettled. I think the X factor in this game is going to be J.J. McCarthy. Yeah. You think they're going to do more of a in and out? I think just like the Wisconsin game where Josh Gaddis pulled out a lot that we haven't seen since that game or before that game, mm-hmm. he knew for for that matchup he had to pull out some stuff to be able to take the momentum away from Wisconsin and to put some more points on the board. I think in this game he's going to pull out some more. 
I think he's going to – I hope, but I I think – I hope more than I think. But <laughs> I think he's going to incorporate J.J. a bit more to keep Michigan State off balance in those points where they think they're building some momentum and they're going to get Kate off balance. You throw J.J. in there. He has the option to go read option. He could hand it off. He could – He's he's he could hit passes that Cade can't more easily. So yeah, I think this is a game where Josh Gaddis goes deep into I don't know how deep his bag is, but he has to go deep into it this game like he did against Wisconsin. I don't know if he's gonna pull out the flea flicker flea flicker again. He's gonna have to do some stuff. Yeah. And I think he will just enough to keep those drives going and to beat down Michigan State's defense and get them tired and yeah. Yeah. And like we said at the open, neither of these teams have really, like, we haven't seen the fireworks. Like, well, this is, you have seen some fireworks. We're Michigan. excited it's about in the terms game. Of scoring. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're excited about the game, but we're just not sure what we're going to see. I expect these teams to pull out all their fireworks for this game because it, uh, that's what you have to do when it's Michigan versus Michigan State, especially when the stakes are so high because, like, potentially – whoever loses, loses a shot at the college football playoff. Because right now, these teams are in position to control their own destiny, to get into the college football playoff. Penn State just kind of ruined theirs. So all of a sudden, Michigan, Michigan State, if they win this game and they look competitive against Ohio State, maybe beat Ohio State, they got a shot. So like, there's a lot on the line for this game and we didn't expect that going into it necessarily. So I think both teams are going to come out and try to do, they're going to try to do their own thing at the beginning of the game. And then whether it be, I don't know, towards the end of the second quarter, maybe into the second half, they're just going to, they're going to try everything and they're going to throw kitchen sinks at people. Yeah. And it's, I, I hope it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to make sure to have, a whole spread of food, some drinks, and just enjoy it. Yeah, I'm gonna be at a like half Halloween party, half Michigan, Michigan State like <laughs> tailgate yeah. party thing on mm-hmm. Saturday. So, yeah, it's gonna be gonna be interesting. Yeah, seeing I think yeah it might be slow at start at the beginning, but things will pick up in the second quarter and as the game goes on. Yeah, and if Michigan State scores 24 points, we both win. <laughs> it just depends on how Michigan does. Um, all right, let's get into uh, a couple other topics for college football. Like I alluded to, Penn State <laughs> lost to Illinois. Nine OTs. Nine overtime. New rules. <laughs> you know, when I looked, because obviously I'm not watching that game. I was in Chicago. Yeah. I'm sure you were like, what? I <laughs> <laughs> I pulled up my ESPN app, looked, I was like, Penn State lost to Illinois. How did that happen? And then I looked next to the box score, and it says nine overtimes. <laughs> and I said, how the yeah. heck did that happen? And, yeah, new overtime yeah. rules. Pretty much like penalty kicks in soccer. Yeah. You, you get a two-point conversion. You don't convert over to yeah. the other side. Isn't isn't that what well, that's Once it hits the third overtime, that's what starts. Yeah, and that that's what high school is? Isn't that similar to, like, what high school overtime is or something? Honestly, I don't even. I don't think so. I think high school has sim. What was the college rules where you like start from the twenty five? Yeah, you're right. The, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Inter. It, it's yeah. it's so weird. I mean, it's kind of fun, yeah. but the funny part is they changed the rule so that there wouldn't be any extra long wild <laughs> football games anymore. Yeah, it's usually how. It and works. this was the worst matchup for the first representation of the new OT rules. Just yeah. two teams with no offensive explosion or it's just hard for them to score and it just goes on and on and on. Yeah. But it finally ended and it was funny. Illinois won in the end. Yep. And basically, like I said, with that, like Penn state's season is basically ruined to be honest. Listen, they, there's a lot going on with them right now. There's a recent James Franklin press conference where he kept saying he was focused on Illinois this week. And he called, he said, (laughs) we're going to play at the big house. Yeah. And they're playing Ohio State. His mind is just not there. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, they're they're five and two, 
And they got Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Sean Clifford looks like he was like 70% healthy. They better, the run game just isn't working. Yeah, and they better they better get right after that game. So Yeah, hitting the toughest part of the schedule. Yep. That's a fun one though. Um What's the other thing I wanted to bring up? Well, Clemson is done. Yeah. They're first, well, Clemson's first down year in I feel like they've kind of maybe been done. six or seven years. Yeah. Yeah. D DJU's confidence and IQ are slowly dropping every week. They benched him. Dudes are hurt. It's just, it's just not looking good for Clemson. Kenny yeah. Pickett. Your guy. Kenny <laughs> Listen, <Pickett>. man. <laughs> the fact that Pitt I said is ranked 17. in the preseason, I don't like this guy. Listen, man. First three seasons, like 60% passer, like eight or nine interceptions a season. Mm-hmm. 23 touchdowns to one interception this season. And we're just at the mid, like, at the mid spot of the season. He's a Heisman contender. People are saying he might be a first round pick. <laughs> it's a, yeah. It's, it's backfiring on me fast, but it's things like this are exciting. Yeah. When dudes just emerge out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Oh, and that's why I, in our group chat, that's why I told you, you should have said that about Cade at the beginning of the season. Maybe <laughs> Michigan would have been title contenders. That doesn't have those things like that. Don't happen for, for Michigan. Yeah. I don't know. Those don't happen. Um, I remember one of the other things I wanted to bring up, Coastal Carolina, their <laughs> miracle season is over uh, as a small school. But uh, Oklahoma. Made the change to Caleb Williams. They, they look they looked impressive against TCU. They stuck to it. It was a perfect performance, the debut for Caleb Williams. But uh, this second game. Yeah. Is, uh, yeah. Kansas. It was, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't good either. Uh, he was 15 of 20, 178, two touchdowns and an interception. But the fact that they – Kansas actually looked yeah. good in the game. That's yeah. the problem. Right. Kansas you're, is you're num- You're number four Oklahoma, and they were number three Oklahoma at the time. Yeah. And, yes, Kansas has a new coach, and they brought in some transfers, and they got some talented guys, but it's Kansas. Yeah. You're Oklahoma. You, you got to – what you do to TCU earlier, like – the week before, you got to do even more to Kansas. Yeah. And it just was a – they kind of fell on their face even though they won. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe the only other notable one for me is Oregon beating UCLA. was kind of minor because UCLA has kind of fallen off the tracks just a little bit, but – They were up by like two touchdowns, and then Anthony Brown started being Anthony Brown mm-hmm. and making bad plays. And Mario Cristobal, Oregon's coach, has still defended him f- fully. Yeah. Saying he's our guy and we have full belief in him. I don't know what it is. I understand being faithful to your guys, but there's it seems like there's some delusion with some of these coaches where it's like you don't have any better options. Right. And he's clearly the guy. Like mm-hmm. he played well in the first half and almost lost the game for you. Yeah. You almost lost to Arizona at home. Like there's some problems. But Kayvon Thibodeau is a beast and still got some talent. Right. Uh any other notable games you wanted to bring up? Oklahoma State lost. To Iowa State. Iowa State back on track. So Wake Forest still undefeated. Seventy to fifty six over Army last week. Yeah. College basketball score. Mm-hmm. Absolute chaos. Baylor's up to sixteen. I like how they're looking. Uh, Notre Dame is up to eleven. I think they're still just decent, but they only have one loss in their Notre Dame, so people are going to keep them as high as possible. Right. Ole Miss is up to ten. Matt Corral getting some first round draft pick hype. Yeah. Heisman contention. They're looking explosive. Lane is doing a pretty good job. Mm-hmm. Iowa fell back down to earth. <laughs> yeah. We we both knew Iowa wasn't a top four team. Yeah. Not even top five. And um, Georgia plays Florida this week. They should kill them. <laughs> <laughs> they look like they might have an all-time defense. And yeah. Florida, they're still starting Emory Jones. Dan Mullen, I don't know what he's doing. Anthony Richardson, he just needs to play the the young guy mm-hmm. who he's clearly the future. And Emory Jones isn't getting you anywhere far this season. Right. Seems like he's just playing him because he deserved it. Mm-hmm. Which any coach that does that, I, I'm sorry. This is like this is the SEC. This is Florida. You can't be playing guys because they waited long enough and just waited their turn. Yeah, unfortunate, but oh well. Not my team though. I don't <laughs> care. I don't. I do not. 
Not my team. I like Dan Mullen. I like Anthony Richardson, but he's not starting. So if he doesn't start, I hope Georgia crushes him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Well, speaking of your team. Oh, last thing. Ohio State is like a top three team again. They're back on track. Yeah. Yeah. Travion Henderson is a prodigy of a running back. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Your team. In the NBA. Well, our team. Winless. You can't call the Lions <laughs> our team and then say the Pistons are my team. That's not how this works. So, we're swapping over to the NBA. NBA season has begun while we are away. Still very, very early in the season, so there's not really a ton to go off of, but you can see some but early implications. There's There's been a lot of interesting things. Yeah. So let's first, let's just dive into the Pistons really quick because there's not a ton to talk about. Cade Cunningham hasn't played. He's expected to hopefully play Saturday, but there's also some doubt that he might not. Um, we also lost Jeremy Grant for a game. I don't know if he's going to be out um, much longer or not. I think it was an ankle injury. Uh, don't quote me on that. So the Pistons are kind of already all over the place. Um, but yet again, they have been in most of these games, except for against the Hawks. They got crushed by the Listen, Hawks. I will but. say, I don't even I don't even know if you're gonna bring it up, but god awful start for Killian in those first two games. I wasn't gonna bring it up, but yeah. Played well against the Hawks though. Mm hmm He looked comfortable shooting, getting into the paint. I don't know if the if if the inconsistent if the inconsistency keeps up, it won't be good because he finished the season pretty well last year. Yeah. And to start it that bad with the first two or three games is disheartening. Right. But good good enough game against the Hawks. Hopefully he's getting comfortable. Like you said, just the first four games. Yeah. It's a lot still a lot of time left. Right. Yeah, I I said it earlier in the week in our group chat that I think he he's he's borderline on that cusp of of being a bust, and I I know it's it's kind of an early say, but I just haven't seen I haven't seen much from him. Like he, I see that he like he looks like he's a pretty good defender. Um, he's pretty solid handling the ball. I feel like he could be a a, a solid game manager. But to me, he looks like a bench guy. He has he has no scoring instincts. Yeah. It is so strange. He is a quality defender, a really good passer, and has a good feel for how to run like an offense and like get people in place. Yeah. But he just has no like he has no natural offensive skill. And it looks bad when he dribbles into the paint and doesn't have no Euro step, no spin move, no in and out dribble. He just dribble, dribble, dribble. There was a one of his first shots against the Hawks. Go off a pick. Dribble five times into the paint, air ball a floater. Yeah. Like, it, it seems like he just has no sense of how to score. Mm -hmm. But second half against the Hawks, he had like 10 points. Yeah. So it's, it's so hard to – it's all over the place. Right. And, I mean, we'll see when Cade gets here, like, what's going to happen because that'll probably take some of the, the pressure off of Killian to, exactly. to handle the ball. That's, like that's that. when I'll really start caring. I want – I want to see Cade, and I hope Isaiah Livers can play before, like, midseason. Yeah. I, I want to see them, too, in the rotation. Yeah. So, it, it's a waiting game for Pit, for the Pistons. They got some early injuries already, but. Sadiq Bay averaging 18 and 10. Yeah, he's he's looking good. Yeah, quality. Malik, can you tell me who the top three teams in the East are without looking? Well, I already have it pulled up, so. <laughs> I figured you did, but. The 4-0 Chicago Bulls for the first time since 96. Yeah. Since 23 was still playing for the Bulls. Mm -hmm. That is that is ridiculous to me. That's insane. Yeah. How is this the first? Even those D-Rose teams, no four and no right. starts. D-Rose, Jimmy Butler. like they, The Bulls have some it's solid wild. teams. But even though they've played terrible teams to start, yeah, this is what a good team is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You get a stretch, a four or five game stretch of bad teams, you're supposed to just walk through them. Yep. And that's what the Bulls have done so far. Mm -hmm. Lonzo is shooting it. He's confident making decisions. He's he's looking like that high level defender again. Zach Levine is getting his buckets and looking better as a defender. DeMar DeRozan is looking comfortable. Hit some big clutch shots against Toronto. Vucevic is doing what he does. And Alex Caruso. Yep. Looking like a a potential six man of the year contender. That glue guy. His defense and his playmaking have been at such a high level. Mm -hmm. it, it's been really impressive. Yeah. We we expected this team to be fun to watch, and so far they have been. Um, I'll talk about the Knicks because 
Knicks are kind of listen. You're not you're not as excited. That was no emotion going into the Knicks. Did you see that video they posted after the first win of the dudes outside the arena? Yeah. Bing bong. <laughs> listen, the Knicks are three and one. The Knicks actually look like a really good team. Yeah, their they are defense deep and is, tough. Yeah, their defense is working out. And I'll tell you what, Kemba Walker just looked good for the first time. This last game. Before that, he was hardly anything for this team. But if Kemba Walker can get going for this team, man, they are going to be dangerous. How good of a sighting is Evan Fournier looking like? Yeah. I, I had it. I like it. It always sounds weird on paper to be like, oh, they signed Evan Fournier. But he's like, he's a solid scorer in this league. His obviously, jumper is so pure. It's yeah, so clean. Like we said, obviously, it's going to lose a little bit on the defensive side of the ball. But. He's he's playing hard on defense, so he's making right. up for it. And they need they needed offense. That's what happened to them last year. Exactly. We saw Julius Randle get triple teamed in the playoffs, and they had nowhere to go. So they add Kemba Walker, they add Evan Fournier, they add some offensive power with an already good defensive team. Like if they can stay healthy, they can they can be there. They can be there again. Yeah, R.J. Barrett looks better on defense. He's hitting his jumper. Mm -hmm. Julius Randle still the best player. Obi Toppin looking more aggressive. Yep. That's a, that's a big plus. Yeah. After and if, investing in him last Again, year. if Mitchell Robinson can stay healthy, yeah. he's, he's a great shot blocker, great defender. So they're, they're like 9, 10 deep. Yeah. And then the Charlotte the, Hornets. The real shock. Yeah. And it's not – so if I said Charlotte Hornets start off 3-1, and one, you would think, oh, LaMelo Balls can have like two triple doubles already or, or something like that or – Gordon Hayward's back to form. It's Miles Bridges. That dude is looking like, I mean, again, we're super early in the season, but he's looking like the most improved player of the year. Incredible Already. start. He's, to me, he's looking like what Josh Smith should have been. Yeah. Like, yeah. When, when he was coming into the NBA, I said he was going to be Josh Smith with a jumper. Mm -hmm. He's looking like even more. Yeah. Besides the jumper falling, he's so big and strong and quick mm -hmm. that just off of, like, one jab step, his quick first step and just like bullying people to the paint. Yeah. It's not hard for him to score. He gets a lot of wide open jumpers. And him and LaMelo's chemistry is just off the charts. Yeah. Not that, even with just oops. Like, yeah. yeah. And the thing that helps him too is that he's not as like, he's big and strong, but he's not as like bulky and sometimes. Yeah, he, he doesn't move slow. It's not, yeah, it's like, not that like slow, bulky. Yeah. Like yeah. Josh, Josh Smith sometimes was a little awkward, at least after like 2000, like after his rookie season. His rookie season, he looked insane. But he 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 got into his role with the Hawks and played well with Joe Johnson and them. But right, he he never became that next. Le he never hit that next level. Yeah, yeah. And Miles Bridges, he's already had two games where he scored over thirty points. And if he can, if they can get that out of him consistently, that's that's insane. I never thought that he would do that coming into the pros. I think as the season goes on, he'll round out around nineteen and twenty. Yeah, but that's still. But if he can give Extremely you an extremely great, yeah, and if yeah. he can give you an occasional twenty five, thirty points, like that, that's that's really good. Yes, well, and even though Gordon Hayward is gonna have less of like the spotlight and like less of the shine, mm -hmm. and people are gonna criticize him for still not living up to his money, yeah. whatever. It's a great thing that Lamelo and Miles Bridges are becoming those the faces of the team, right? And Garden can, I mean, I said Garden, Gordon can just step back. He's still like the second best playmaker on the team after Lamelo, mm -hmm. and he's trusted to hit shots and be that veteran presence still. Yeah. Then, how Ish Smith like every other team he ends up on <laughs> that game against Brooklyn, Lamelo didn't play in the fourth quarter and he just dominated the Nets. Like I don't understand. I enjoyed we both enjoyed Ish Smith as the backup here in Detroit. Yeah. But I don't understand how he has this, these moments, mm -hmm. like two or three times a season where you put him in and he just lights up Yep. after all this time. Like, it's, it's really impressive what they do. I don't know if they'll be able to, to sustain it. Health is going to play a big part of it. Yeah. But, yeah, they've, they've been really impressive. And LaMelo's shooting has been, like, lights out. Yeah. His confidence is at an all-time high. Mm hmm Any other teams in the East we should talk um, about? Um, The one I was going to more, more so bring up a couple players. Tyler Hero. Looks like he might be back. Obviously too early to say, but in the three games that he's played, looked really good. Yeah. Uh, so maybe finally having that child and maybe he's becoming an adult now. Maybe that's uh, 
kick them in the pants. I don't know, but he looks good so far. Hey man, I I didn't jump off the like team hero after a yeah. so- after he had a sophomore slump. It happens to a bunch of guys. He looks locked in again. Yeah. Um, and then I got I, I have to give props to my guy Mo Bamba. He's getting playing time. This, all it took was a coach focusing on him <laughs> and putting him in a good position. That's all it took. Yeah. Even though yeah, the team they're them the them and the Thunder are so young. Mm-hmm. They're they are like toddlers in this league. That there there's going to be moments where it looks ugly. Like the first few games for the Magic didn't look great. Yeah. Then they beat the Knicks. Mm-hmm. Cole Anthony had 29 and 16 rebounds. Yeah, and eight assists. Exactly. Like Franz Wagner didn't look great in the summer league. He's looked pretty solid so far in the NBA mm-hmm. season. Suggs has been not great, but I think he'll he'll still pick it up eventually. They got some good pieces. Yeah. They got some good pieces. And I think the other funny thing about the Magic is they have Franz Wagner, Mo Wagner, and Iggy Brazdakis. Michigan team. <laughs> some guys. Oh, wait a minute. Is this right? They also have Gary Harris. That is hilarious. That's Michigan and Orlando. All of our snowbird <laughs> people. I want to get your thoughts on a few teams. Okay. So, James Harden has not been James Harden so far. He's mad that he can't get the calls he used to get anymore. Loving it. And outside of the calls, he's just not hitting, he's not scoring like James Harden. Yeah, I think he's getting into his head a little because of it. Because he's not getting the calls, he's frustrated. I, I think that might be throwing off his play. It might be. That's Maybe. it's it's honestly really silly. And also Steve yeah. Steve Nash has to back him up because he's James Harden and yeah. He's one of your but best players. James James, you're one of the best scorers in NBA history, honestly. You should you should be able to score mm-hmm. without tangling your arms with other people and throwing your head back. Yeah. You should still be able to score twenty five. Mm-hmm. Like I, I I don't understand why he's gotten off to such a slow start. Yep. Boston, they looked really strange to me. Outside of Tatum and Brown, who can you really trust to score after them two? Al Horford. Maybe, maybe like we said, it's just been four games. Maybe it's yeah. going to take more time. Because you got to think, it's, it's looked kind of weird to they're me. They're still trying to get uh, Schroeder involved a little bit and figuring out their rotations. But yeah, I, I agree. They're kind of a kind of an oddball team. But they, I mean, to be honest, they kind of were last year, even with. Even with Kemba Walker, it was just like after Tatum and Brown, will Kemba have a good night? Will he not? I don't I don't know. Lastly, Dinwiddie. Yeah. Man, every time I watch him, he's the one guy where I watch him and I'm like, Pistons. Mm-hmm. Just damn Pistons, man. Yeah. I, did, I had no idea he was going to be good when he was here because <laughs> right. he only shows like small signs. Yeah. But. Every year he just seems to improve a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And he's just hitting big shots and he's looking like a really good lead guard. Like the yeah. Wizards could could be around that eighth seed. They should be, honestly, as right. long as Brad Beal is healthy. Yeah. And I again I'm kinda happy for Kyle Kuzma. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. He's also played, played pretty good. The rookies, Evan Mobley, Chris Duarte, mm-hmm. and um Rookie for the Raptors. Oh, uh, Scotty Barnes. Scotty Barnes. They have all been lights out so far. Yeah. They've all been really good. And I I don't know what it is. This rookie class might be one of the deepest. We've said this already. Mm-hmm. But after just a few games, it's looking like it's already happening. Yeah. These dudes, they look like they're already just ready, and mm-hmm. they're not afraid of anything. Yeah. And I think they're actually already kind of overperforming. Like, we thought this class would be deep, but we didn't know, like, how – how high their talent ceiling would be. And it's looking pretty good so far. Uh, The one I would say is, and and I'm kind of happy about it, but I'm a little bit, a little bit confused, I guess. Uh, Jalen Green. And we'll move out of the West and we'll talk about the West. Um, I have some opinions on him too. But (laughs) but Jalen Green, after all that talking that he did in the summer league, in the preseason, and he's had a rough start. To the regular season. Well, everybody's was extremely impressed with that 30-point game. But yeah, like you said, we'll get to that. Yeah. So let's just slide on over to the West right now. And who do you see at the top? It Listen, it, it is so <laughs> funny. The, the real funny thing is when you look at their roster, they don't look deep. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you got Bielitsa, Otto Porter. Yeah, Jordan Poole's coming out. He's emerging. Yeah. Damian Lee, whatever. Juan Toscano. 
these guys are playing their butts off. Mm-hmm. Like Jordan Poole is really emerging. Draymond Green is looking like himself from like two or three years ago. He's looking good. For those of you that don't know, we're talking about the Warriors. They're four and zero. Yes, on the season. <laughs> Bealitsa looks like a perfect fit for what they do. Yeah. He's so good moving the ball and shooting and just doing whatever they need him to do. Yeah. In the short stints of Otto Porter, he's hitting shots and looking good. Damian Lee and Juan Toscano are good three and D guys. Mm-hmm. And Steph is Steph. What do we really have to say about him? Yeah, what, what do you say about him at this point? He's lightning in a bottle once again. Uh, he is playing so good right now. Like He's picking yeah. up where he left off last season. One, one thing that's going to be really odd to me is when James Wiseman comes back. Mm-hmm. I feel like Kevon Looney is like the perfect center for what they're doing right now. Yeah. Like he's high IQ. He doesn't need the ball. He's a good passer. He's highly efficient around the rim. Does rarely miss his shots around there. Right. When Wiseman comes back, he's going to need some touches to stay happy. Right. And he's going to need to improve a lot. Like it's going to be weird seeing how he fits once he comes back. But once Clay comes back, I'm going to, I'm going to watch them every time they play once Clay is back because it's just going to put a smile on my face. Yeah. And the thing you got to think about, too, which is going to be really good for when Clay comes back, is that now they're getting all this, all these minutes and things from Jordan Poole and Damian Lee. Yeah. That that's going to be able to come off the bench and just be a, like ready to fire away. So they're going to have Jordan Poole, Damian Lee, Otto Porter, Bielitsa, Iguodala, like, now they're bench. I didn't even bring up Iguodala. Yeah, all yeah. of a sudden their bun- bench becomes really solid. Exactly. So, yeah, scary that the Warriors are already off to a 4-0 start, but, yeah, I- I- I'm not that surprised. Steph Curry is insane. I actually think I have more to say about the teams that aren't doing great than the teams that are doing good. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt. Like, Portland? What what what's the time on on uh the Dame deal? There's uh well there's what, a lot of controversy. That that Portland. game at against the Clippers in LA was embarrassing. Yeah. They were down by like 40 like to start the fourth quarter. Yeah. yeah. But the other problem is now there's a lot of controversy because Chauncey Billups has called the team embarrassing. And since he's just got there, people are already concerned cuz he like he said oh the team looks embarrassing in the preseason. What do people expect they, out of a dude like Chauncey? Like, I don't, right, come on but, now. But that's also like, I mean, Chauncey's one of my favorite players of all time. He's not a guy that's going to do coach speak. He's just yeah. a real dude. But that's what I'm saying, though. If if you're a rookie head coach, that's some, where you can get into dangerous waters, though, because not all players don't always react perfectly. With this to generation that. of players, I I so, can somewhat agree. Like, I don't know. I they need to be a little bit careful. Plus, Dame has played awful. It, it, like he's two of twenty four from three, yeah. so if he just hits, I think they said he's shooting like not even eight percent or something. He's shooting awful, of course. And if he were to make like forty percent of his threes that he shot, like he normally does, he'd be averaging like twenty eight, twenty nine points a game, just like normal. So I expect them to turn it around. Obviously, CJ McCollum's actually played pretty good. Um, in this early game, they're just not. A, they're not a very deep team. No, like they they they're playing Nasir Little a lot, and I still don't think he's like he's playing well. But I don't think he's a guy that should be like your seventh guy, right? Seventh or eighth guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. But they did blow out the Suns, which strange. It's also kind of funny because the Suns are one and two again. Uh, they'll be fine. Yeah, again, early in yeah. the season, the Suns beat the Lakers. So I mean. We should cover the, we should do the Lakers last. Okay. Yeah, that's a bit much to go into. Uh I think the Spurs, they're a weird team. They've no, they've, they've, they've they've looked like really competitive and good in every game I've seen them in. Mm-hmm. But they're still one in three. Yeah, they they're they're a weird team every year. And now without DeRozan and like any big name really, they're really kind of weird. Like you got Doug McDermott leading the team in scoring. DeJounte Murray, though, he's looked good. He's looked good. Kelton Johnson looks good. Um, Devin, Devin Vassell looks like he might be taking the next step. Mm-hmm. Doug McDermott is lighting it up from yeah. three. They even got 27 out of Jakob Pertl. <laughs> he was going, he played, I watched the highlights of the Lakers game last night and he was playing really well. Yeah. But they ended up losing in overtime. Mm-hmm. Yep. Lonnie Walker is still getting some, some run in there that he's having some good games. So again, they got, they got some bright spots. 
You want to talk about OKC real quick since they're the only other winless team well, besides they're, the Pistons? They're the youngest team in the league. They have one ser- seriously high-level player. The rest of them are developing guys. Like I think Lou Dort and D- D- Shea Gill just are like the real like really good players that can be on winning teams. Yeah, and then you have a few vets like Derek Favors, but you got Poku, which we we still cheer for Poku, but yeah. it's year two. And Josh Giddy actually doesn't look too bad. He needs con- he has consistency issues right now. No, he he looks like he looks ten times better than what I saw in those Australia highlights. That's what I mean. I I don't know what what it was about him playing in that league. He just didn't look that impressive to me. Right. He looks much quicker, like much. He he just looks better. Yeah. So I mean that's good. That's good news for the Thunder. And how you feeling about your Pelicans? Not good. <laughs> Granted, Zion yeah. hasn't played. Uh, they did beat the Timberwolves, which was a bit of a surprise to me actually. The Timberwolves, another team that's actually started pretty well, but the Jonas Valanciunas switch. For Steven Adams has been pretty good. Fantastic. I like that move. I thought Steven Adams was going to work out. Just didn't. Valanciunas has worked way better for this team. So Devontae Graham is playing pretty solid too. Yeah. So this is another one of those teams where it's kind of like, we'll wait and see, wait and see when Zion comes back. Because Nikhil Alexander Walker's actually played really well to start the season. So this team is just not at full strength yet. And I think they're trying to figure it out. But they're also not very deep either. So that's that's kind of the they, they're so young, at least, in their bench. So, lots to figure out with that team, I think. But, yeah. Um, we got to talk about the Utah Jazz getting off strong again. They're 3-0. and um, They're kind of just... I honestly didn't even want to mention them because this... They're doing their thing again. Yeah. Which is... They're I, the I same Utah great. team they've been the past two years, which is phenomenal. Good for them, but not yeah. much to talk about, honestly. Yeah. Um, Sacramento... Harrison Barnes. He's averaging 28 the first week of the season. He's, he's taking nine threes a game. Yeah, he's playing good, which I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, obviously, it's it seems pretty good for the team, but I feel like it's taking away from, like, De'Aaron Fox a little bit. Well, the, the whole Marvin Bagley situation, first of all, is awkward within itself. Yeah, that's true. They didn't have him in the rotation opening night, and now he's only playing, like, 10 minutes a game. Yeah. Buddy Heald is looking locked in again. Except for last night. But Well, it's just bad shooting night. Right. But he's he's looking like he cares again. So he probably wants his trade value to be high <laughs> once again since he was almost a Laker. Yeah. Avion Mitchell I was gonna say. already playing high-level defense. Yeah. Uh, and shooting well. He's, like, locked people down already. Yeah. What, what did, he kind of locked down Donovan Mitchell the one night. Is that mm-hmm. who? Yeah. Um, and then the Clippers – Without Kawhi, eh, there's not a ton to expect. Luke Kennard, though, shot the our boy heck out of it. Yeah, he shot really good. Mm-hmm. Twenty three. Isaiah points Hartenstein has been a good backup big too. Mm-hmm. He's been really good in pick and roll. I mean, he looked he looked all right in some games with the Cavs last year. Like he yeah. he had some moments. Um, Eric Bledsoe's kind of doing better this season. And he did last season. Eric Bledsoe was still a good player, but he's he can't be depended on yeah. in the playoffs and to be a like full full time starter. Yeah. Paul, How, Paul George is playing pretty good. Okay, yeah. How about John Morant looking like an absolute superstar so far? Yeah, he he's been putting up points. He looks almost unstoppable. Yeah. Which is crazy. He's only like six three, like still less than two hundred pounds. Yeah. He's just such a dog and he's so talented. Yep. They almost yeah. beat the Lakers. I mean, the Lakers had to kind of make a comeback, but, um, yeah, John Morant looks good. Grizzlies, if they can figure it out, they're going to be tough, especially with Jaron Jackson healthy this year. Uh, that backcourt of Desmond Bain and DeAnthony Melton, John Morant, like, it's pretty good. Um, Yeah, I think that's that's about it. Houston is kind of, like I said. Oh, we, can, we can talk a little bit about Jalen Green before we get to the Lakers. Like, Houston, I, I don't know. Like, they're so young, but I, I figured they would have looked a little better, I guess. Because we've seen, like, spurts out of Kevin Porter Jr. We've seen spurts out of Kenyon Martin Jr. We've seen spurts out of Jay Sean Tate, Christian Wood. But they just haven't put it all together yet. I still think they, they have so many veterans that don't need to be there 
to me. Like, they still have Eric Gordon, which I don't know why they haven't traded him by now. Yeah. John Wall still there. Um, DJ Augustine. I, I can I can deal with DJ Augustine being the backup and having a few veterans. But, mm-hmm. yeah, there are still some guys they need to get out of there. The, ro- the roster is young, really young for the most part. But, yeah, those few guys. I'd almost say let's play Sangoon over Daniel Tice at this point. I agree 100%. We know what Daniel Tice is. That's a great yeah. He's a solid center in the league, but he's nothing special. Just play Sangoon. Who who cares? I don't know. That's just my opinion. All right, let's go to the Lakers real quick, wrap up this, and then we can go to picks to finish out the show. Lakers might be figuring it out. Might be. Le- LeBron didn't play last night, so I'm not going to say that. And he's not going to play tonight. Listen, there there are a ton of people that blew up and is – are saying, oh, you thought Russ couldn't fit. You thought he wasn't. LeBron didn't play last night. Stop. Yeah. Whenever LeBron is out, Russ is supposed to control the game and be full Russ. Yeah. But when LeBron is playing, it's still going to take a while for them to figure that out. Because when it's LeBron and Russ, you do not put the ball in Russ's hands. You put it in LeBron's hands. And at that point, you have to figure out what to do with Russell Westbrook. Mm -hmm. It didn't look great the first two games. It looked very messy. Yeah. And they still have to figure that out. I expect Russ to still put up big numbers when LeBron is out and he has full control. Yeah. And I think he can put up numbers even when LeBron is in there, but there's going to be some chemistry oddities. It's going to look weird. And I feel like they're trying to force Russ into scoring more than I think he needs to. Um, I agree. Like, I think they should be okay with him scoring 10 to 15 points a night. As long as he's giving you that same energy and attacking the basket with those attempts. Um, But I feel like teams are still just trying to use him for shooting too much. Like, he just needs to be a cutter, somebody that attacks the basket. Exactly. And keeps the defense kind of honest, opens the floor up. Like 16, 7, and 7. Yeah. Why, why can't he just be around there? Do you agree that even though it's never going to happen, it would be probably be better if he came off and just controlled the second unit and did his full thing with the bench and you allowed him to just be full Russ? Maybe. It allows Rondo to start. Even though it's never going to happen. Yeah. Rondo to start. But then you could still put Russ in in the fourth quarter if you felt like that's what he needed to do. Yeah, I, I could see that. I I think it's more of like, it almost becomes like a PR problem, like with Carmelo early on when he was getting moved, and they said they were going to move him to a six-man role. So I think it would be like kind of a stinker, and Russ might give up it for that. I don't know. Yeah, but I I agree with you completely. He he needs to be a cutter. He needs to be invo- involved more in picking roles as the guy with the ball and the, the guy setting the picks. And he needs to be fully invested in going to the rim. Yeah. Every time I see him take a three, I just roll my eyes. <laughs> he still takes terrible threes. He can take some mid-rangers, but he's not as good as the, at those anymore either. Right. He should be able to get a good 15-16 off of just driving to the basket yep. throughout the game. And, then, and he can still get his rebounds and get some assists. Right, and get to the line if he needs to. Exactly. But, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to be mad if the Lakers are bad this year. but Neither am I. You know, They won't be bad, though. No, I think they'll figure it out. I can see where it's going to work in some scenarios and it's not going to work in other scenarios. So, I don't know. We'll see. Again, super early on in the season. Um, but we're starting to see a couple things. But we still have to see. There's a lot of guys that are coming need to come back from injury. Pascal Siakam still not playing for Toronto. Like we said, Clay Thompson trying to come back for the Warriors. And then you got to think, I mean, Clippers are without Kawhi Leonard probably all year. Um, and the Nuggets are basically without Jamal Murray until maybe the playoffs, maybe. So a lot of big names that are out and teams trying to figure out a new identity and we're still waiting for Cade's first game. All right, let's get into week eight picks for the NFL season. Right now, picks stand as I have 66 correct. Malik has 72 on the two weeks since we've been gone of picks. We're tied. No movement whatsoever. We're both doing a great job. Which is funny. Both doing great. Um, so we got to do these ones kind of quick. Actually, really quick. 
Green Bay at Arizona Thursday Arizona. night game. Green Bay has everybody injured. Yeah. I think just from a talent standpoint, we both have to pick Arizona. I think Green Bay could win it, but we'll see. Philly at Detroit. And guess what I did last week without even knowing it because we did our picks last minute? What? I picked Philly to win. Hmm. Why did I do that? I told I told you I gave I up no on idea. Philly and they lost to Las Vegas. Are you giving up on them in this one? This is terrible because Listen, I have to pick between the team Sir- that I've given up on and the team Sirianni versus Dan Campbell. Who do you trust more right now? I trust Dan Campbell more. Then take him. Which is terrible. Then take him. Do it. And they don't have uh, <laughs> Do it. All right, I'm going to take the Lions. Give me the Eagles. <laughs> Dang it. Carolina, Atlanta. Sam Darnold's look terrible all of a sudden. I'm, I'm going, still going to take Carolina. Oh, defense? Or the defense? D- I, I just I think the Falcons are going to be like a five or six win team. I don't think they're just going to rattle off like a four-game win streak out of nowhere. Okay. I don't think they're good enough. I'm taking your uh, Matt Ryan sauce. Okay. My uh, Matt Ryan sauce. You keep talking about him the last couple of weeks. Miami at Buffalo. Buffalo. Miami's just lost their uh, – every, every bit of mojo they had yeah. is gone. San Francisco at Chicago. Holy moly, Chicago looks bad. I'm still going to go Chicago. Wow, I'll take San Francisco. I do not trust Jimmy G at the helm of this offense. They don't get any yeah. type of, like, anything going. Yeah. Unless when they get it to Debo Samuel, that's the only time they get anything going on offense. I just think their defense is okay. Pittsburgh at Cleveland. Browns. Is Baker Mayfield playing? Even if Case Keenum plays, Browns. Yeah, Keenum's a good backup. I'm going to go with Pittsburgh, actually. Right. Nick Chubb is supposed to come back, but we'll see. Tennessee at Indianapolis. Tennessee How all of a sudden. Tennessee? They got their mojo back. They're the team we thought they would be. Yep. And even though I still think the Colts could be a like surprise wild card team at this point, I'm going to go Tennessee. Yeah. I just trust them a little bit more. Yeah, I think they have the momentum. I'm going with that, too. Cincinnati at the Jets. Mike the White or Joe Flacco? Bengals. Yeah. How, heard listen, me. Jamar Chase. Looks he's good. Re- he's looking like he might challenge Randy Moss for the greatest rookie re- receiver season ever. Yeah. Look, saying look good is an understatement. He he look he's looking all time good. Yep. Joe Burrow's comfortable. That even that defense, they're playing better than anybody expected. They're playing over yeah. their heads right now. Just be prepared. The Jets have Joe Flacco, so if, we, if he you, starts, you have to stop this. If he starts, the Jets will at least put some points. You up. have to stop this. <laughs> Okay, the Rams at Houston. Cooper Cup also looking to break a Randy Moss record for the season, which yeah. is insane. Uh, you know who we're taking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tyrod might be back, but I heard I heard Tyrod might play. I would hope so, just so Houston looks better. Yeah. Uh, New England at the Chargers. Chargers coming off a bye. I think they're going to be right back to normal. Yeah. New England looks pretty good, but they're not there yet. Yeah, I'll go. <laughs> Do I throw a wild card? Is this my wild card of the week? I'm going Patriots. <laughs> oh man, Malik. I'm going Patriots. Okay, that's my wild card of the week. Jacksonville at Seattle. Ugh. Gino, man. Gino looking rough. This is 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 this really a wild card if we take Jacksonville? No, because Seattle can't score right now, and it, they couldn't stop the run last Monday. Could or- this be Trevor's second win? It could be. Urban Meyer has some confidence right now. You got my confidence. I'm going with Jacksonville. So will I. Washington at Denver. Snooze fest of the week here. Both of these teams have fallen off. Washington's I defense. Really don't, I don't even know who to take in this Washington's game. Washington's defense is awful, and we thought it was going to be Listen, one of the man, better defenses in I the league. I don't really trust Denver. I don't trust what. You know what? Coin flip. I, I like Heineke's grit okay. and his toughness. So I'm just going to go Washington. Okay. Yeah, it's just not a great matchup. Then I'm going to. I guess I'll take Denver. Just a, this is a good wild card game. Uh, Tampa Bay at New Orleans. Can I, can I read off a few stats real quick? Go for it. First in passing yards, Brady. First in t- touchdown passes, Brady. Tied fifth for interceptions with three. Second in QBR. So I'm taking Jameis. Give me the Bucks. Yeah. I'm with you. 44 Orleans, years old, people. New Orleans defense is starting to look better. 44 years old. But how do you stop Tom Brady in this offense? Yeah. Dallas at Minnesota. Dallas. This one's. This could be a good game. 
I'm I'm kind of it excited might, to yeah, watch. Yeah, Kirk Kirk might put up some some numbers. But I think Dallas's defense is uh, too improved. Actually, I hate that I'm picking Dallas, but I'm picking them. Giants at the Chiefs. Are you bold enough? Listen, man, I'm I'm not going. The Giants have everybody injured. I thought it was a for sure thing. Carolina would destroy them last week, and they pulled the victory off. Kansas Listen. City probably had their worst game in a while against Tennessee. Joe Judge is throwing reverses to his quarterback that was in concussion protocol two weeks ago. Give me the Chiefs with a bounce back. Is it Daniel Jones or OBJ? I don't know. I can't <laughs> tell. Give me the Chiefs with a bounce back. How many different? Real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six different. Wow, if the Giants won on Monday night, I can't do it. <laughs> I'm picking the Chiefs. I'm sorry. <laughs> We'll Going safe. We can tie again, but it's fine. It's fine. It's it's fine. All right. This has been Views from the Sidelines. Michigan, Michigan State recap next week. I'm excited for that one. Another week of NFL football. We'll get a little bit more news on the NBA. Also, World Series is going on. Atlanta Braves are up one to nothing over the Houston Astros. The world is hoping for the Braves to win, I think. We'll see you guys next time. College basketball starting soon, too. I can't wait to talk Michigan basketball. So much more happiness than football. Too many sports going on. The best ones. <laughs>